Steve. All right, we've got to have a great day today, a relaxing day, totally chilled, heading off on the way to France, culminating in Thietfeld Memorial, where we're going to lay a wreath to ex-soldiers, remembering the troops from the past. Let's go and pay our respects, mate. Coffee first. Coffee first, yeah. Let's do it. Last one to the Channel Tunnel, get some breakfast, Alan. I think that's <laughs> going to be you, mate. Let's Take do care. it. Well, here we are, mate. Arriving in sunny France. Oh, my childhood country. Good to be back. Good to be back, yeah. Took the sun with us as well, mate. Oh, we did, mate. It's lovely, isn't it? Lovely. Beautiful. En France. And on our way to the memorial of the Battle of the Somme. Looking forward yeah. to that, mate. Yeah. And our respect to uh, the Fallen. The whole offensive was... All along no, there. All <laughs> along, a lot a lot mm -hmm. of battles ex that existed over that, I think, four or five month period, July to, yep. July to November in 1916. And uh, memorial, 72,000 missing soldiers. That's what the memorial's for. That's uh, right. Which is unbelievable, isn't it? Back then, you know, we complain now, but back then, it's just there were men amongst men, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. It was um, completely different. Different warfare. Yeah, of know, course. It was go yeah, out mass horrendous. on numbers. Mass on numbers. Exactly. You know, couldn't even fathom that nowadays. Although well, those boys had it hard. Not the right kit. Yep. You know, just the weather Survival. against them as well, wasn't it? Yeah, weather exactly. Against yeah, just surviving uh, whilst trying to fight horrendous but hey we're here now here now mate yeah um and a little nap there as well I had about 10 15 minutes you know when you have one eye shut put my chair back yeah uh, the old military days military you know, get, get it while you can get it while you can <laughs> eat and eat and sleep when you can exactly eat and sleep when you can mm -hmm. so where are we on uh, we're on turning right here aren't we by the look of it. Heading towards Paris, is Calais. Is that what it is? A, yeah. a, a, A26? There you go. Um, there you go. There we go, mate. We're good to 600 go. yards. It's been a while since I've been to France, to be fair. Uh, a long time. time uh, 10 years. Uh, drove over to Germany, so okay. done this route pretty pretty much uh, a few times. And um, love it, mate. Love, love France, Belgium, Holland, Germany. Yeah. Absolutely amazing, mate. Absolutely amazing. But never been to, to this memorial, to be fair. Uh, did go to Bergen Belsen when I was in Germany, concentration camp. That's difficult as well. Difficult. Yeah, I've been here be once um, and it was during a school trip. I lived in France. Right. I was a youngster from the age of 10 till 16 or 9 till 16. So I remember doing a school trip here. Um, it would be very interesting now having served yeah. and uh, fought for my country to come back and uh, pay my ultimate respects. A different from someone that yeah. understands for you obviously very very different you know and um, as you say from being here as a youngster maybe not recognizing what it yeah, was all about course. maybe no. and um, just part of history lessons part of history yeah. yeah French roads I, I always feel are really good to be mm. fair yeah uh, pretty clear yeah. Uh, well maintained well maintained, well -maintained, well -maintained yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like the other way I get the no road from. works We've got to, to go to Paris after that, haven't we? So I remember, um, in the, you know, back in the well, say back in the day, a couple of years ago, I used to travel at night in England. You used to travel at night on purpose because there are no road works, mm. the roads were clear. And now they're blocking up motorways. It's, it's, it's worse at night than it is in the day. There's no, it's, there's no difference. There's not enough road for the vehicles. There's not enough. Oh, not wide enough. No. It's Speed limits. Uh, oh, actually, thinking about it, I, I, there is a setting probably that will change this to kilometres, but. Uh, not really sure where I am on that. I'll leave it where we are. I've got to say a big thank you to Sandy at Audi UK and also Mike Papworth at Lincoln Audi for the car for the journey today. Right, so. Uh, coffee. Coffee, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, coffee break. Another five hey, minutes. Listen, in France, it's a yeah. bit different. Are the they? Coffee out here would blow your head off. Oh, I don't like strong coffee. Oh, no, do no. I? It's like Marrakesh coffee or something. Oh, oh it's, it's proper coffee. All right, well, let's get to that. All right, so this is a what, 70 or is it a 90 on here? I can't quite remember let's have a look i think it will be on here it will be 70 70 kilometers yes which is what 55 70 kilometers an hour yes 55 so that's 1.6 isn't memory it memory serves me where i should let me know that boom 
17. 17, okay. So, right, so we are turning off A yes, A26 Saint Omar. There you go, Saint Omer. Saint Omer, is that right? Is that right? You speak fluent French? Yes. Oui, je parle oui. couramment français. Yeah. J'ai vécu 7 ans en France, donc euh, j'ai perdu un peu l'accent, mais pas le vocabulaire. Oh, yes, uh, two for me as well, please. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said, um, I've lost a little bit of my French accent, but um, not the vocabulary. Oh, liking it, mate. Liking mm. it. 90, so we can get up to 70 here, can't we? Yeah. At 90 kilometers an hour. Listen, you've got a foreign plate, mate. You can do what you want. Oh. <laughs> are you are you egging me on yes, to I put am. my foot down? All right, do mate. It, I'll do put it. my foot down. <laughs> but I get a speeding fine, mate. I'm gonna I'm, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna blame uh, I'm gonna blame you. Blame me. It's Is fine. that all right? You're all right. With People that? normally yeah. do just blame me, mate. Yeah. And had yeah. me by the throat. And, yeah. You know, exactly. uh, We'd expect that arm. from Ant, but not from you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you were driving, I'd be egging uh, you on as well, yeah, mate. Trust exactly. me. Oh, yeah. oh, put your foot down. Give the power, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How am I gonna, you know? Give a uh, sort of um, recommendation on the car if you don't <laughs> test it. <laughs> anyway, I've got a present for you in the back. What you got? I've got it just down there, mate, between the, the two back seats there. Yeah. And um, it is, mate. What is it? Is this it? It is, mate. What the hell is that? Well, that is, mate. That is a Chewbacca mask. You know, because you've got right. the beard already. Yeah. You know. I just thought that that might be uh, a pretty cool and uh, see what you're like in a Chewbacca mask. This is cool. It's cool. Have like you ever this. seen one of them before, no? No, negative. No? What okay. do I do? Just whack it on. Put it on, mate, and, um, well, your chin will go on that bit there and, uh, and it'll... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way, no way. <laughs> that is, that I love is, it. That is mint. Oh, I love that it. Is absolutely wait, for a, wait for a car to come. Wait for a car. Go. Go. Wait for a cover. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. Uh, you know. You want to get into acting, uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, mini Chewbacca. Mini Chewbacca. There we mini go. Mini Chewbacca. There because you are vertically challenged. Aren't I you? am vertically <laughs> challenged. I'm only five foot ten, guys. So the normal Chewbacca is what? Six four, six five, six he's six. Taller than that, is he? Is he? Bloody oh, hell! I would say he's a seven footer. Seven footer. I reckon so. so you have got a way to go, mate. I have. Got, listen, there's yeah. probably double that. Maybe you should be. Maybe. Wait, well, what, what I lack in height, I make up for in muscle, mate. In muscle. Looks. That's right. That's right. Maybe we should get one of those Ewoks, the, the little teddy bear ones. Maybe. Yeah. You, you could be one of them instead. No, R two D two. R two D two. Because obviously R two D two is a lot more, a lot brainier. So that's the way I fit in. That's true, mate. That's um, true. You are, you are the brain, the brawns, but not yes, the height. Not the height. Not the no. height. Sorry for anyone that's. You know, vertically. This challenged. isn't an. This, this is not an uh, anti-height person. <laughs> yeah. Sharon always says to me she's five foot. Yeah. And uh, well, she's not. <laughs> she's brilliant. she's four, four ten or four eleven. She? She's four ten, four ten. But she's a, she's a. But good things come in small packages. They do, mate. They uh, do. You know, they and um, what she lacks in height, mm -hmm. she has in gusto. Let ah. me just say, okay, she's like you, but in a woman. You know, you. Without, you. The, without the beard, obviously. Without the beard, yeah, that, that'd be a bit weird. Like, yeah, um, it would be a bit weird. But she, yeah, when, when well, she... Well, whatever you're into, mate, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm into chocolate fetishes, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, when she, um, when when I piss her off, as, mm -hmm. as, as we all do. She goes Aunt Middleton on your ass. She goes Aunt Middleton yeah, on me, right? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. does, mate. She goes all, she goes all, she just gives me that look. Ah. And, and I get it where I can feel her looking at me. And she does this, maybe your missus does this mm. as well. And I can see in the corner of my eye, she's still looking at me. Mm. And if I don't look at her for a minute, mm. and I turn to her, then she'll look away. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, yeah. And you know not to look. You know not to look. You think, you, she's waiting for the she's eye waiting, contact. She's waiting for the eye contact. And once yeah. you make eye contact, you're done. You're, you're done, mate. You've done that. It's like yeah, one of those I think there. It's in their rule book, isn't it? It's how in their to, rule how book. to be a woman. How to be a woman. It's the death stare. You know, they the say death. us men have the, the thousand yard stare. No, no, no. It's the women. Yeah, the women. And then you look at you, and it's like that. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, you, you know, you can feel like it burning in the back of your head. You're yeah. like, <laughs> oh man, avoid uh, eye uh, contact at all costs. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, That's no, how to counter it. Just uh, avoid eye contact, or you just do more work away from home. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's the one, isn't it? I've got to go and climb a mountain. Yeah. Well, again, <laughs> yes. So let's talk about then. The, obviously, busy last year, busy yeah. this year. Uh, so what have you been up to, mate? What have you been up to this year? Tell us. Uh... Books, filming, media, 
UK tours, boot camps, um, day camps, corporate work. Do you know what? It's just been an absolute melange because we're in France. So melange means mix. Mix. Okay. Um, mix of uh, media. Yeah. So more filming. Yeah. Books. A new book out on the fifth of September called The Fear Bubble. Oh yeah. Um, day camps. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of day camps, introducing sort of uh, physical fitness along with mental health, well-being corporate stuff corporate events you know helping out companies with leadership and mm -hmm. teamwork and motivation and positivity etc um, so you mix put all that in the mixer mix it all together and it's just work 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 you know with the odd uh, holiday for the family here yeah. and there um, a bit diverse so, so you're not getting bored you're doing lots of different stuff oh, I'm doing lots of different stuff and I'm not getting it all oh, it fits within that sort of yeah uh, media remit but um, mm. it just branches out, and the literacy world is really, really interesting. You know, since my book first ran in, um, number one bestseller. Thumbs up, guys. Good book. Um, the world has sort of embraced me in, 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 in that way. They want more. Of um, you. They want more. Yeah. So um, that's why I wrote the Fear Bubble, um, and also I've got a third book that I will be writing later on this year. Um, which will be out probably next year. Be um, out Steve on tour book. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, mate. There we go. You're in it. Uh, so, um, what's the so second book about? Um, Tell us about that one then. Uh, so the fear bubble is yeah. about how I challenge fear um, on a daily basis right. and how to challenge fear. A lot of people experience fear um, once in their life and they never go near it again because it's been such a traumatic experience. Right. Or, you know, it's, a, it's an emotion that we don't know how to control. Right. Therefore, it controls us and we don't know how to harness it and, and use it to our advantage. Mm -hmm. So it, the book's along emotional intelligence. And then I talk about emotional intelligence is understanding your emotion for what it is and making it work for you. Now, a lot of people think oh, emotional intelligence, intelligence is this mind baffling word and um, it's not. It's acknowledging your emotion for what it is and making it work for you. So um, the book talks about fear. You know, we don't challenge fear enough in our lives. You know, um, we let it control us. We let it take over. And uh, ultimately, if you don't push through fear, you'll never find out what you're truly capable of. Right. It's those moments of um, right. I don't like this. I'm not feeling. You know, I'm not feeling this. Well, if you want to stay in your safety bubble and you don't want to learn about yourself and you're happy just to just to stay in the void, mm -hmm. then don't challenge it. If you want to find out about yourself, and who wouldn't want to find out about themselves? Who wouldn't want to know what they're capable of? It's almost a message I want to get out there to tell people, you know, we're capable of so much more. Improving but yourself. But you need, yeah, self, but you need yeah. to challenge fear. You know, fear is your emotion. Why the hell wouldn't you want it to work for you? Yeah. Why do we feel fear and we just go, oh, just don't, don't acknowledge it, and it just takes us over, and then we just get ourselves out of that situation? It's a case of, yeah, understand your emotions. That you're okay. with yourself for, till the day you die, right? You're yeah, with yourself yeah. forever. So why, why don't you want to understand about yourself? And I just break it down on, you know, how I um, used it in the military, how I used it just as late as uh, Mount Everest when I was standing on the summit of Mount Everest. And um, also in my everyday life, just from the little things of getting on stage, uh, you know, talking in front of thousands of people. Um, even a meeting, you know, coming across well in the meeting, or whatever it may be, the, the fear sort of level is can be as low as it low as it you wish it to be, or as high as you wish it to be, and it's just a sort of turnkey solution on how to harness fear and become limitless. So, um, yeah, really good book. I loved writing it, and um, I can't wait to see what people think about it. In my mind, I've sort of revolutionised the way we think about fear. Yeah. So it's already been out in Australia and New Zealand. It got released last week and have, I've had such positive feedback already, changing people's mindsets, changing people's lives. And it's, you know, I don't go out, I don't ever set out to do that because it's down to the individual to change their lives. Yeah. But what I want people to do is think differently about um, themselves and to challenge themselves. Everything starts with you. Yeah. You know, if you can be the best version of yourself, you can pass it on to your family, you can pass it on to your colleagues, you can pass it on to your children. You know, it's, um, it's all well and good, you know, looking after other people, but if you can't look after yourself and you don't learn about yourself and you don't know yourself, you'll never become the best version of yourself.
and this is them, and this is a book not just targeted to people who might like military. Because the first one, mm -hmm. people would have bought it. Maybe oh, I want to read Dan's book because mm -hmm. it's military and that's all yeah. that base. This is this is a book that can um, be a benefit to everybody. Anybody. Yeah. anybody, 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 and Eddie. And I talk about it in yeah. the book, so I won't give too much away. But sure. I talk about you know it being relevant. This fear bubble technique that I use, um, of breaking it down into bubbles, um, it's been used by kids doing their GCSEs, yeah. and it's been used by adults doing mm -hmm. you know extreme challenges. Excellent. So it can go from sitting, you know, in front of a piece of paper. To jumping off the edge of a cliff. Yeah, that's tough for kids, isn't it? Doing exams, yes. you know, they've got to uh, have, have that, uh, that fear on that uh, the yeah. final exam, the final pass mark, and so I can imagine that would work, work well for kids like that. Yeah, ages. so it's a proven. You know, when I when I first sort of explained the technique a couple of years ago to a guy who's doing his GCSEs, and he came out and he said, look, it was phenomenal. It just, I thought, right, that's when I thought, well, I've got to get the message out. Mm. I've got to, uh, I've got to try and. Uh, try and break it down as, as simplistically as possible and that's what I do you know everything I do in life I don't I'm not an intellect I'm not a book I, I come from the university of life yeah and it is it's, it's transferable yeah and since I found out that it's transferable I thought right let's get it on pen and paper and let's get it out to the masses give it back yeah give it back When's that come out in the UK? 5th of September. 5th of September. And you're going to do a book tour signing event like you did with the last one? Yeah, I'll start my book tour. Come, I'm doing my book tour on the 1st of September till the 6th of September. So you'll be able to right. buy the books early in store. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that's a good little uh, good little um, eye raiser for people. And, uh, right. So, yeah, it's, um, I, know, I enjoy doing my books. It's something that I'm very passionate about. And... Um, it's something that I'll be doing for for a couple more years, that's for sure. Brilliant. So, you mentioned the third book. Can you tell us a little bit about it, or not at all? The third book is behind closed doors, Steve. Oh. I cannot mention it. We can't unveil the cover. <laughs> no. Okay. Unfortunately, not. Well, and it's the same with my media work. You know, I've got yeah. um, a lot of media work, you know, um, going on as well. And the latest one is. Um, Straight talking with Ant Middleton, um, yeah. Where I took Liam Payne on a three-day trip to uh, South Africa to uh, Namibia. Liam Payne, um, singer. Guy. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. guy from uh, One, One Direction. Direction. Yeah, yeah. He came out with me, and we went on a sort of a mini adventure for three days. Um, and it's an interview show. You know, it's yeah. not a survival show. It's not an adventure right. show. It's an interview. But we we do we go on a on an adventure. Yeah. Um, but it's an interview show. So, cool. You know, so you're interviewing him? Yeah, I'm interviewing oh, right. him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's coming out in November, I think. Cool. Is that, uh, is that Channel 4? Is that Sky? No, is that Sky. BBC? Sky. All right. Okay. Sky. Excellent. So just one of my many ventures. One Steve. of your many ventures. Yeah. How did that come about then? Was it uh, something uh, he approached you or you approached him? Or, no, just, or? Uh, we were approached with the idea and I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. And it was important that it was different, you know, whatever, you know, I wanted to make sure that they enjoyed the highs and the lows of an adventure yeah. and therefore I could get them to open up or not to open up right. in, in them highs and lows. Oh. So it's, um, you know, when you when you go on a three day adventure and you haven't had much sleep, you know, you, you tend to open up a bit more. But, um, so there's no bee sting? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this, isn't, this isn't anything like SAS or... Or anything like that. This is just a one-on-one -on -one from someone like myself who can understand the trials and tribulations of life because I've, you know, I've been there and done it. Yep. So yeah, very, very busy year, mate. Very interesting year, and a lot more to come. Back end of this year in 2020. It's just non-stop. Non That's why I grab my 10 minutes kip when I can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So more SAS coming up as well, I presume? Yeah, more SAS. That's my little baby. That's yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, I've got more of that coming up. Just excellent, by the way. Recce. Excellent, the uh, the celebrity one this year. Yeah. Because last time we met, you hadn't done that, or you'd done it, but it hadn't been out. Out, yeah. And obviously, you had also uh, the integration of um, yeah the women. females, mm -hmm. women in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it was really uh, real different dynamic. To be fair, 
And um, yeah, it was interesting. How did it? How did it? Uh, was it did, did it go exactly as expected? Say, that, let's go the the, the the female integration one on that um, side. Yeah, no, it, it, the dynamics of the course slowed down. Yeah. Um, but you know, not in a negative way. In a in a in a quite eye-opening way, really. You know, I'm not. I'm one of these people. If you're, you know, I don't let diversity, culture, religion, gender. I don't let any of that distract me. You know, I'm not. I don't look at the person because they're black, white, pink, blue, or you know, Catholic, Muslim, Hindu, or whether they're male, female. I look at the person. Can they do the job? Yeah. You know, I don't let any of that distract me. It's um, you know, people say, oh well, you need to know. Are they the right person for the job? Yes or no. Um, the moment you, those distractions come in, that's when that's when you cause right. problems, right? Because yeah. they're like, well, 50% should be women or 50% should be men. No, 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 no. Who's the best person for the job? Yeah. Well, there's more women in here than, well, because that's, that's, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm picking people, well, are they good for the job? So it's quite good when that course started was to I sort of cut, cut all that out. You know, there was no favoritism whatsoever. It was like, right, this is what you need to do for the job. Can you do it? Yes or no. So yeah, it's, uh, it was an eye opener and sort of one of the first sort of test trials, shall we say, yeah. of um, seeing how they how their women cope. But um, yeah, I was impressed. I really enjoyed doing it. It's four years now, four or five years now. Four years, four years now, years? yeah. Four years in October. Four years in October. Do you feel that um, when you're, because uh, obviously it's a team, it's uh, you all make the decision, presumably all four of you together. You all have your ideas, and your your uh, this guy might be better than that guy, and so on. But do you do you get a sense of you know the top five percent or ten percent out of the course in the first few days, no, no. or do do you get surprised after a week and you break down those barriers? And I think having yeah. done selection for for real, you know all sorts of shapes and sizes. You know you get men that are a bit obese, you get men that are skinny and short, you get men that are tall and lanky, and you're like, you know, there's so there's such a diverse sort of group of bodies that you think to yourself, if you were to judge, you go, how the hell have you passed selection? How the hell have you got through the trees? How the hell have you, you know? <laughs> so um, it's like, when I say the trees, I mean the jungle yeah. phase. Um, so I, you learn very quickly not to judge. So when I, even when I see the, the recruits on this Who Dares Wins, I don't allow that in my head straight away. Even though I can see, like, you've got an attitude, you're gonna be a bit of a problem child, or, you know, you think your shit doesn't stink, or you know you're a bit precious, so you're going to suffer a bit. I can so I can see that. You yeah, know, I'm a very good judge of character from the off, but um, you know they, they might flip it around, or they might be you know something might happen, and I go, whoa, I didn't expect that from you. Yeah, they learn so, quickly. They're yeah, on, they're yeah. on the hop. They're, oh, they're, they're changing. Hop, yeah. yeah, but when when it comes to yeah, no, it's just pure. It's purely on performance, and uh, would they fit the mould of an SF operator? which only if you've been an SF operator will you know what that mould is. Yeah. Um, and people say, well, you know, if they pass, no, 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 it's not, it's not if they pass. They, if some people have passed the course, got right to the end of the course, they've gone, no, you don't fit the mould. Well, what is the mould? None of your business, you don't know. Go. And I get that, and I'm like, yeah, 100%, you could pass all the tests, but you just, you know, you haven't got the right attributes or characteristics to, 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 to be an SF operator. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, you won't make it. So that's what people don't understand. You get a lot of people that jump on the bandwagon and try and, uh, try and talk SF, and you're like, have you passed selection? They're like, no, don't talk to me then. But if you, <laughs> you're, the, you're, the, you're the elite, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, you're the, the top of the top, but yeah. you're not gonna get there by, mm. by friendship or anything like that, either, mm. or merit. You know? And even, right. even people that have worked with special forces, you know, you haven't kicked the doors down with us. You haven't been in that team or that, that you know, that brief where, we know exactly what we're doing and how we're going to cope with this and how we're going to deal with this, you know. Um, now you've got a lot of support ranks that, you know, chops off about, oh, I've worked with them, I know how, no, you don't. Trust me, you don't. So don't have an opinion because your opinion doesn't matter. So it's, it's quite a, and it's a very, it's the most elite club in the world. You know, what goes on within the confines of squadron lines no one will ever know yeah unless you're there unless you're there but yeah it's, it's great dynamic and i enjoy doing the course each year excellent and um hopefully many more to come many more to come mm -hmm. just get through this toll what was your worst part of training uh, steve for me worst part of training 
for basic training is not nice. Doesn't doesn't matter if it's RAF, Navy, Army, Royal Marines. It's it's not nice, is it? It's not nice. You know, and I might say I'm good at this or I'm good at field craft or whatever, mm. but fitness was never my bag. And so that was my toughest part, to be fair. But getting involved of the camaraderie, I, I love that. Yeah, absolutely love that. You get that, mate? Yep. <laughs> Oh, make it. Oh, <laughs> shit. There you go, that's me. Is this after, is it after we said uh, French roads are great? So, loved the camaraderie, loved the sports, loved all of that, but hated the march and hated the fitness. Uh, so, I, but, when, but when I joined, I did, I did sign up for six years thinking, okay, well, if I push my boundary from three yeah. to maybe go for six, I'll see where I go. But I only got out because my unit was being posted back to the UK and uh, I wanted to stay in Germany. And, um, and I thought, well, that was the right time. I didn't want to go back with the posting and then come yeah. back for an extra year. So I thought, right, that's for me. I did adventure training, did skiing, did paragliding, traveled the world. I mean, what can't go wrong with that. Yeah, training, no, exactly, you know? exactly. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. No, and when you put your, you know, you put your time in, doesn't matter whether you've done three, five, Six, ten years. Do you know what I mean? It's like you've you've put you've dedicated your your time and your uh, your loyalty to the country. And it's uh, you now my hat goes off to anyone that's done their time. Yeah, I've got to say though, I've done some shit that you haven't. Yeah, have you? Go on in. I have, mate. Go on in, mate. You know, spill. We we both we beans. both we both went to you know to um I went to Op Granby one, and you obviously went to all of those other tours that you did. But I bet you never painted any cam nets. Do you know what? <laughs> Have I've you heard that shit? I've never painted cam nets. Right. No, but I've heard of it. You've heard of it? I've heard of the elite the, cam the, net the elite, painters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we went, we had like no Desi combats, yeah. no Desi boots, mm. and we had to paint the green cam nets desert. La, la, on shit. the hangar, roller. Really? Oh, no shit. Yeah. And when we come back, guess what we had to do? Paint them green. You're I mean, you are brilliant, mate. You are, you are there. Well, listen, no, you're brilliant because <laughs> You done that. I, I'm never qualified enough to do that. Oh. I'm never qualified enough to do that. That's on my CV, mate. That's, that's on my. On that's, that's on. That's on my. Um, my secret CV. Uh, uh, Come that painter. Listen, I've I've painted grass, mate. I've done. <laughs> I've done all that. You've but done never, all the bullshit. Never you painted a uh, cam net. You've never painted cam nets. Mm -hmm. did you, uh, I'm sure you painted the vehicles as well. I don't know. Did they? Did you have to paint the vehicles? No, did no. no? Oh, all right. We had to paint the vehicles as well. Just had to sort yeah. of camera yeah. weapon up. That's about it. Oh no, no, no. We did. We did all that. So I, I can say that you know I've done. I've done shit. I might rejoin back up. Just, just to do that. Yeah, that's it. Where's, that, where's the cam net um, painting team? <laughs> oh, man. And, you know, because I... I need that on my CV. I can't, CV. I can't believe. You know, I've got P Company. I've got Royal Marine Commando. I've got Special Forces Operator. I've got Royal Marine Sniper. Counter-Terrorist Sniper. Forward Air Controller. Primary Fires Operator. Okay, and, and more, yeah, best recruit, best PT, King's Badgeman, and yeah, I missed oh. the cam oh, mate. painting Sorry. course. It, it was, it well, was how the... long was the course? Jesus, or did they man. just go, do you know what? You are a cam net painter. You don't know it yet? You don't know it yet? Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how long did it take yeah. to do it? Oh, f us, mate. <laughs> <laughs> But it was over. Listen, trust me, I've I was heard of some shit that. jobs Have in you the heard military, some shit jobs, but like, that, that 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 was shit, mate. That tops them. That was shit. I think after that, when they realised that uh, they were probably going to do more desert operations, they employed a company to uh, create desert cam nets. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? I've never told anyone that, so you've got to keep that. No, listen, keep listen. That your, I will keep hat. it quiet. Under your hat, mate. <laughs> good job we're not on an inter interview here or anything like that. It's a good job we're not. Um, that is true. That is true. This isn't going out to the masses. No. If you could be a fly on the wall right now. Oh, oh mate. Mate. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that is it, mate. That is it. I'll tell you what I did like. Um, uh, I, I loved going on exercise. Yeah. Okay, going on exercise, you know. But what I what I, I did love is bacon grill. I loved bacon grill, mate. That was awesome. Yeah, you probably didn't did have that when yeah, I was. did. Did you have it crispy? No. No? No. Mouldy, maybe I don't know. <laughs> you, you cook it up, right? You could cook it up, but yeah. you just have it raw. Uh, yeah, the, raw. Never, the, never the... heated it up. I just had oh, it raw. Oh, mate, you missed a trick there. Oh, right. You missed a trick there. Yeah. Right. I need to join back up then. Yeah. You do. You yeah. need to join back up. Right. Okay. Give me yeah. Coming to come in a 
small like, circular tin. Yeah. And you get yeah. the little, the little turny. Uh, yeah, the little turny thing. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know what it's called. Yeah, no. Tin opener, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember that, mate. My rations, I can remember our rations when I first joined up. It, they were just horrendous. They're yeah. a lot better now. Yeah. But they're... So you probably had the 10 year old stuff that yeah. was when I was there. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like. Yeah, could definitely. Yeah, it's definitely like they've got a, a shelf life cheese, for like 20 years. Yeah. Like oh. oh, mate, yeah. 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 It's yeah. got a shelf yeah. life of like 20 years. Make yeah. you shit for a month. Yeah, yeah. Oh, It'll clog you up. Yeah. And make you not shit for a month. <laughs> Sausage and beans. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, all right, We they? had them. Did you have them? Did you have the yeah. MREs? Did you have the Americans? Uh, yeah, we did uh, yeah. Um, when we went out to uh, Afghanistan. But I was staying in Kandahar, staying on an American base. I used to get up to helicopter and the, the, the um, QM um, used to be stood there just giving us pizza. Yeah. Come off Middleton. Yep. Big, <laughs> large pepperoni pizza from Pizza Hut. <laughs> and then back to the accommodation. Sleep, wake up, fight, eat, sleep, <laughs> <laughs> and gym. Yeah, I was just going to say, it was a gym. It was an, there was a, an air base inside a stadium, football stadium, where the American uh, Harriers were back in, uh, in uh, 1990. And they had a bar there called Scuds and Suds in the bar, watching, watching the game on, you know, the Super Bowl and everything, and all the barbecues. I and like I'm thinking... It. This is how this is how you should go to war. With, this is the kit that you yeah. should be going to war with. <laughs> All right, right, guys, uh, yeah. set up the barbecue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get some ribs in. And, That's it. You know, you're going back and says, what, "What's it for, chef?" Yeah, bacon grill, guys. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, that. great. Did you use uh, American equipment for weapons when you were special forces, or was it uh, you allowed to say? Or um, I use a. Did you have a choice? Yeah, yeah, we had a choice, but um, we had a choice of seven six two, which is a higher calibre. Or five five six, um, but my weapon of choice was the Canadian C eight um, carbine. Right. Um, that's five five six weapon. It's just the carbine was short enough to fit through the smaller um, mm -hmm. sort of rat runs and uh, right. and holes uh, that the Afghan um, compounds had, so you could you know tuck it into the body and it wouldn't, wouldn't stick out too far. Right. And then get in and get in and get the job done. Um, my secondary weapon was a Sig Sauer 229. So 226 and 229, but the 229 is slightly smaller and it fitted in my hand better. Um, and then my tertiary weapon, I'd come out and have an axe. Not that I ever used it, but um, a lot of people have knives or commando daggers, especially being yeah. in the Royal Marines and the, the special boat service. So I, yeah, I just had an axe that was quite accessible, just clicked on. Um, but if you, if you find yourself on your secondary weapon, it's either a tactical call because it's a, sh it's a small room, or you find yourself, you've had a stoppage, and you find yourself, um, you're in the shit, really, and you need to just use that just to, to get, to bide yourself enough time to sort your, your, your assault weapon out, you know, to, to obviously clear it or what you need to, or to get it back in, in the game. And if you find yourself on your tertiary weapon, you know, you're basically hand-to-hand -hand combat then, which is a... Deal, and uh, fortunately, I never found myself in that situation. Um, nor, nor should you ever, really. A bit different to your kit. Yes, mate. You yes. had the old SA80, right? I, uh, I did training in the SA80, mm -hmm. and then uh, when we got to our unit and we went um, to up Granby, uh, our unit still had SLR, mate. SLR, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, 762, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, big, big beast, mm. uh, but uh, it's got to be the longest rifle in the world. You know? Silly long weapon. Silly long weapon. Silly, silly long silly rifle. rifle, yeah, long rifle. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy thing as well. Yeah, not that's light, right. not yeah. light at all, mate. Uh, sturdy though, mm. sturdy, but uh, but boy, when it, when you fired that, it was, uh, and also um, semi-automatic as well. So not full auto. You, well, mm. 762 full auto. You know, you're going to hold it down. It's, yeah, it's going to go all over the place. But uh, so we went out with them. Uh, thank God, never had to fire it. And mm. um, so uh, different for me. Obviously, I'm yeah, a of course. support with the Army Air Corps, and uh, you know, just uh, total respect for you doing what, you, what you've done. Um, never, never wanted to do that. Could yeah, never yeah. do. They could never do it. Mm. It's total respect, mate. Absolute respect. And it's in each to their own, isn't it? It's mm. uh, that's what that's why the world is so so fascinating because everyone's different. Everyone has, you know. Mm -hmm. Different strengths, different weaknesses, different mindset, different ways of doing things, and different goals. And 
So listen, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, people say, I couldn't do your job. And then I'll say, there's a lot of things that, you know, I couldn't do yours. Or, you know, it's, uh, and at the end of the day, it is a job. You know, so some people are, are made for some jobs, some people aren't. Simply That's that. your path. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't ever expect for you to be a car salesman or an owner, owner of a company or anything like that. I'm, I'm a so when did when did that actually come up? When did when did when did you think well, I'm going to own my own company? Or when did <laughs> when did it would it go? Someone say, ah, Steve, you should do this. You're good at this. Yeah, I, I, or did you just re- figure it out? No, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I mean, obviously, when I was younger, you know, I always thought, you know, if, if you if you if, if I could own my own business one day, that would be great. Mm. But that's as much as the thought was. Yeah, that yeah. that thought was exactly the same as yeah, I'd love to join the military. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. So nothing more than that. Then when I got back from, from Gulf War One, had a bit of cash in my hand, bought a car, got ripped off, hated car sales guys, hated mm-hmm. stay agents, hated lawyers, they're all the same. And um, and then about six, seven years later, and I was on the on the civvy night in Germany, a guy that I'd played golf with said to me, look, we need some, some help in the showroom, you know, uh, you know, selling cars. I think you'd be great at it, because he knew me from playing golf, chatting and all that. And I said, I don't want to do that. He says, look, you know everyone on camp, you play football with everybody, you, you know, play golf, I think you'd be very good at it. Mm-hmm. And I had no money at the time. And um, and I said, look, I'll give it a go. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no, I'd always try something once. You know, you're gonna know very quickly if you don't like that. And uh, and I loved it. I just thought, oh wow, this is excellent. And uh, helping someone out and being in control. And because you're in control, you're in control of your own earnings, if that made sense. The more you worked, the harder you earned, the more you earned. And, uh, and I thought that was that was the way forward for me. So I, I knew after that one or two days of doing it that that was gonna be me. So we set up Forces Cars Direct back in 2001. And, it, and it's great to, as you say earlier on, you've learned all these things in life and you wanna pass on fear bubble knowledge and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. It's, the, it's a little bit similar to the learnings that I've had within the business world and I can pass on that knowledge that I've got to People like Zoe and Laura and Mike and everything else, they, and it does give you a bit of satisfaction, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, when you yeah. can you see you can see someone else nurture and yeah. grow, puts and you a think, smile on your face. It does put a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. It does put a smile on your face. Look at France; it's so open, isn't it? Like, there's this there's this countryside after countryside. So, would you ever move to France? Is that um, your yeah, plan? I maybe think I would. Day? Um, yeah, I'd like to move to the south of France. Um, I think that'd be a good location. Uh, England is great, you know, UK is great, but it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a rat run, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, I'd like to maybe retire here in France. Um, I like Switzerland as well. Luxembourg, I like Luxembourg, it's nice as well. How about yourself? England, the pla- uh, UK, the place for you? Um, I remember growing up in Newcastle, and I think very much in the 70s, people always hold it at the same place. They always lived in the same place and their cousins lived around the corner. And they, you know what I'm saying? Everyone was always in the same areas. And uh, and I always, I couldn't get that. Why do people still live in the same areas mm. all the time? Yeah. So I'd, I'd always had this affinity to want to travel as a kid. So when the opportunity yeah, came up to go in the military, where do you want to go? Abroad. Don't yeah, care, yeah, cool. I want to go abroad. And yeah. um, so, and then that, where do you want to, oh, I want to go to Canada. So. I'd, Canada, Bavaria, and all those other places. Yeah. So, uh, I, 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 it's not that I get bored anywhere. I'll make. I've, I've lived longer in my life now in Lincolnshire. Mm. You know, since I come back yeah. in two thousand one, I haven't any other location uh, ever. Oh, yeah, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Oh man, peaceful. Beautiful, peaceful. Yeah, it's peaceful. peaceful. So, two thousand twenty. Then you got uh, stuff coming up. You. Uh, Last time we met, you talked about you'd, you'd met with Richard Branson. You you met with a uh, Marky Mark Mark Wahlberg, did you? Yeah. You had, a, you had no, one of his yeah. burgers, did you? Yeah, I did have one of his yeah, burgers. Yeah, he's a nice guy. A nice really guy. nice guy. Um, yeah, I spent a bit of time chatting to Mark Wahlberg. Um, I didn't spend time chatting to Branson. I chat, spoke to his pilot that flies the uh, the Galactic. Is oh, it the, um, yeah, the Virgin. Is it? I think it's. The, Galactic, where, they, Galactic. Yeah. where they penetrate the atmosphere, the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. and uh, wow. so I had some interesting conversations with those guys, but um, more media, more books, more shows, more, just uh, just growing nicely, just that expansion of uh, of growing and uh, and getting my message out there, so, um, and again, I'm, I'm always testing myself, you know, I'm, I'm far from 
you know, having been there and done it all, I'm just starting. You know, mm. I feel like I'm just starting. So, but um, so what yeah, do you want like to do? I what do you like, want to do? I feel then? like media books. Yeah, yeah all of that. Yeah. Is there something? Yeah, we talked about acting. Maybe if you uh, yeah, ever, ever opportunity comes along, is there is there something you say to yourself? Oh, I really want to do that. No, you know, nothing. No, no. Um, I'm very much a sort of an optimist like that. You know, I like to or an opportunist. You know, I like to just uh, go along with the flow. Um, even though I've got a plan, you know, um, but I'm very much getting into business. I'm getting my a business head on, I'm getting some f- a good few business opportunities coming up, um, investments. You know, my whole world is opening up, I feel. <laughs> so it's, um, there's no, I don't set myself any goals as such because something might come, off, come up, like SSU Dares Wins, for example. Something might come up and boom, I'm in a completely different career, I'm in a completely different space, I'm in a yeah. completely, you know. And as long as I have the passion to back it, then, you know, whatever I do, I'll, I'll do well at because I'll make sure that I do well at. But I'm very happy. I'm very happy in this career. You know, I love doing the media stuff. I love doing the books. Um, so I'm very much going to stay focused on that for the for a while. But um, yeah, lots of exciting stuff coming up. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. So um, 2020 is uh, is jam packed, and I might, you know, but I will be, you know, poking my toe over the pond. Ah. Uh, yeah. USA, you did a That's billboard um, something in America. Yeah, I saw I that, that earlier on in the year. Yeah, I was on in Times Square for a month. It was Times Square, was it? Yeah, awesome. New York. Awesome. And I went over there, and you know the recognition that I got over there was quite surprising because I thought, you know, obviously in the UK and now it's, um, you know, it's when you become a sort of household name, it, you know, you, it's nice to be recognised and it's nice to chat to people that you know want to know about you. But when you go over to when I went over to America to New York, I didn't expect it as much. But you know, I was walking around Times Square and being grabbed left, right, and centre as well. So, yeah. um, were they Yanks or were they Brits? In yeah, America? both. Yeah, yeah, okay. both. So, um, yeah, I thought, you know what? Let's uh, let's, let's get time to, strategy time to up it. and let's uh, let's let's see what they got to offer. You're gonna you're gonna attack no. America like Ed Sheeran and the Beatles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all all good credit to you, mate. All good credit to you, because you don't strike the sort of person that would be pigeonholed or to typecast yeah. into something. No, to be fair, no. To and it's got to be natural, you know. It's, yeah. it's, I'm not. I, I don't. I never force anything. Um, you know, I write books because I love writing books. I do my media stuff because I love doing it. I get so many media opportunities, so many many TV opportunities, but that you know, that are turned down because. They're not true to who I am, and they're, they're not authentic. There's no message behind it. Mm. So um, you know, it's got uh, uh, it's got to come natural. I won't go begging and pleading. You know, yeah. you know, take this on, take that on. It's like you know, this is what I'm about. Are you interested? Yes or no? Well, yeah, we are. Right, let's see what we can do together. Right. Are you, you know? allowed to say what you turn down? Is there, uh, you give us an indication of what you uh, you don't see fits you? Um, no, it's just yeah, I've turned down a lot of a uh, lot of sort of. Uh, TV shows that are just entertainment, right? I get you know, it. There's no, there's no, it. there's no message behind it. There's no, yeah. There's no. I'm not saying there's no purpose to it, but it's like it's purely entertainment. It's not. It's 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 yeah. It's not yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's not, not me. Yeah. Okay. It's got to be a purpose to it. You know, am I helping someone out? Am I mentoring people? Am I coaching people? Am I, uh, you know, teaching people? Right. You know, ultimately, are the viewers watching it and going, ah, right, you know, is that, am I making them think? Or are they just mundane, sat in front of the TV going, oh, that was great, yeah. you know, um, but yeah. I've got nothing from it. So not a reality TV? Um, no, well, yeah. it's just one of those, um, yeah, reality TV is just watching other people's problems. and <laughs> But it's not, you know, f- fair play to, you know, but, but I take my hat off to anyone that's out there working and trying to make something of themselves. and. Now, ultimately, everyone's just trying to to feed themselves and then provide for their families, and you no. Know, but there's just a way where, for me, I like to keep my moral compass in check, mm-hmm. and it has to be true and authentic to who I am for in order for me to to want to do it and to put 100% of my effort into it. Yeah. If I don't want to do something and I'm and I feel like, you know, I'm 95, 96% there, then I won't do it because I know there's because then. You know that four or five percent. That's my heart isn't in it. Yeah. Something will happen, and then it's just like, well, and you weren't. Why did you do it in the first place? If you're not going to commit to it and, and give one hundred percent to it, then why do it? 
and it'll come across wrong. Yeah, and if it's yeah, not of course there. it does. Of course yeah. it does. So it's um, yeah, it's, I don't just know. To make sure that um, well that, said. That, I, I, that I pick and choose what I do. Um, that's true to me, um, and that fits in with with with, with uh, my brand and my message. I've got to say, I did love your free kick, by the way, on. Um, Soccer AM. Uh, soccer AM, mate. That outside of the right foot, I think it was. Yes, it was. Curled yeah. round that uh, wall. imaginary wall yeah. and, uh, into the bottom or left hand corner. Yeah. Um, it's just it's chipped the post and yeah. went in. And I'm thinking that's Roberto Carlos esque yeah. Le Tournoir. <laughs> I remember seeing that, thinking, oh, he's never going to score that. And it, whoa, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what? It's one of those where I thought, you know, go for it. Go for it's, it. It's, uh, you know, it's either going to go horribly wrong <laughs> or, or beautifully or perfectly right. And there was no room for error. There was the no case room for That's error. why I just, it would curl around the wall, just chipped the post and went in and I was like... You could have hooked that left into someone's face, oh, couldn't you? Mate, well, Tony Adams, you see Tony Adams a couple of months later, no. come on there and try and do the same. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he hit someone straight in the face. Really? <laughs> But then you did uh, Soccer Aid yep. after, I think yeah. it was, is that yeah, right? it was, yeah. And, um, well, I think uh, I got the call up from the free kick, to be fair. Is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> for, for a good half an hour whilst I was on the pitch, there was me, and I was diamonded by Roberto Carlos, Robert Perez, oh. Essien, Michael Essien, Michael Essien, and Robbie Keane. And you, I was really? Just, uh, yeah, and I was just like, I don't stand a chance. <laughs> I was just like, but I remember thinking to myself, I took a couple of seconds to take a step back and go, this is surreal. Now I'm on yeah. a football pitch with these uh, football um, sort of elite um, and I'm running around like a headless chicken trying to get the ball and they're just like making the ball work and yeah. it was uh, it was an experience that I'll never forget. It was absolutely brilliant and um, yeah, I can't wait hopefully next year to do it again I, I know you didn't win so mm. it's not nice to lose yeah, uh, you know being a winner as you are yeah. and so on and being dejected at the end but but in the end it was for charity but the experience for you was just was I just great I didn't yeah. mind whether we won or lost obviously it's nice to win but when it's not your trade and you trade and you try and be competitive for it you're just you're just pissing in the wind <laughs> do you know what I mean it's just like don't you know listen yeah. enjoy it you know you, you don't, no yeah. one expects anything from you you're not a professional footballer you know, they, they, you know they're just happy that you've taken the time out of your schedule to, to take part and to pull in the crowds and to do the PR for, for UNICEF and um, it's just a great 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 event so it must have been great for you to play with Perez then being yeah, no, awesome yeah, man, you know? yeah it was great it yeah. was a uh, Old Robert Perez. Because that would be um, you growing up, wouldn't it? That, that yeah, era. Yeah, one million percent. Era, you know, the, the bird and camps and the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bird camps, the Overmars, the Vieras, the um, uh, Petites. Henri, Henri. Adams, Bold, Winterburn, Dixon, um, Alan Smith. Oh, all of those. Um, you know, Lumber came... Uh, Freddie. Um, Freddie, Freddie Parrot-headed yeah. Lumber. You're yeah. all the purple and hair that you used to have. Dennis Burkamp. All of those. My um, my favourite Henri goal was the one where Manchester United we flicked it up. Yeah, over Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, best 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 goal for me. But uh, I got a bone to pick with you as well because obviously I'm a Leeds fan, as you know. You did a talk at Norwich. Yeah, that I did. Yeah, just yeah. before they played Leeds, they at Ellen Leeds. Road, I did. and they beat Leeds two 0 Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. Uh, 2 0, 3 0, something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I'm thinking, him. Yeah. why did Ant have to go and talk to them? <laughs> Leeds are in the in the, the throes of winning the they championship were, at were. that point. Who and, won uh, it in the end? Norwich came top. Oh, Sheffield they? second. Leeds were in the playoffs and, and blew it. And I guess that's what you're talking about doing corporate stuff, isn't it? About yeah. doing that. So that would have been a corporate event you did, I'm uh, Yeah, it was. Yeah, I gave the, uh, the, the first team a talk, a little private talk. And I spoke about you know them being in the, in the position they were in, and it's like, like climbing Mount Everest. Where you know you're getting closer and closer, you know you can't afford to take your foot off the gas, you know, and it's uh, um, yeah. And then they went and w- whooped Leeds. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. So what you need to do, mate, is go to Leeds. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Go to Leeds. Go to Leeds. Mm. And, yeah. uh, and give that and give them a talk mm. too. Other than football, do you uh, and, the, and the fitness that you do? Do you, uh, did you did you do skiing? A bit of snowboarding, mate. Snowboarding. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 I've took snowboarding up a couple of uh, years ago. 
a friend uh, of mine called Mark. And then um, last year I went with uh, uh, Wayne Bridge, um, the former Chelsea footballer. Yeah. Celebrity um, guy did well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he made it. He smashed yeah. it. Yeah, he done really well. Top, top bloke. So top I'm bloke. gonna go. I think I'm going again with him. Back end of the year or beginning of uh, 2020. So yeah, he's a top bloke. Um, yeah, so snowboarding. Uh, do you know what? I wish I would would have picked it up when I was younger because I think you're, you know, now that I've got uh, such a busy career, I can't afford to get injured and I can't afford to mm. to sort of, you know, break a bone or whatever it may be. And you're very conscious of that. But when you're young, you, you don't really care, you know, you're like, all right, listen, it is what it is, let's just go for it. You so, just recently played at a charity football, actually. I did, mate, yeah. I, um, uh, it was for Veterans in Crisis in Sunderland, and um, someone I'd linked in with wanted me to help out, sponsor, and, and do some stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I said, yeah, I'd be great, but I want to play. Yeah. And I hadn't played football in 12 years mm-hmm. uh, for my local team in Metheringham. But it, it was awesome. Back in goal, absolutely loved it, mate. Absolutely Good. loved it. Absolutely loved it. Great, great time. So I'm going to do that again next year as well. Um, nice. On that touch. And if you if you are free and you're able or you can do, mate, you're welcome to come along. Yeah, listen. Uh, and, and kick some. I think up. I think I stay away from the crunching tackles. <laughs> you stay away from that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stick to the uh, soccer aid. You stick to, stick to the easy matches. Yeah, exactly, mate. Fair enough, mate. Exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you do, when you get your chill time, you do, do you watch uh, m- movies, TV? Do you, uh, you know, not a TV my fan? chill time revolves around my children. So anytime I get a bit of downtime, it's with the children. Yeah. And, and to be fair, they they do relax me, you know, because I concentrate on them and them only. You know, right. There's no there's no other distractions that are allowed to come in because it's my quality time with my children. So um, you know, even though people say. To me, and you go you go home to a, to a hectic house, but that hectic house is actually my my peace, if that makes sense. That's your peace. Yeah, it's like I've got the children there. I've got Emily. I've got my wife. Um, so it's um, yeah, I can actually switch off, and that's what I do. That's why I work one. I put one hundred percent into my work, and because then when I go home, I I put one hundred percent into my family. Right. I sort of am good at segregating the two. Um, but yeah, my, my sort of downtime is I've normally got a two-year-old hanging off my shoulders. He thinks that his mode of transport is, is a, on my shoulders. Right. So, and then I've got a three-year-old on my back. And then I've got a 10 and 11-year-old who, you know, want to go out and, and play and, and have fun. So, um, so you've got no time to watch Game of Thrones or no uh, Love Island. Oh, no, yeah. Not that I could see you watching Love Island, to be fair. <laughs> No time for for any TV, you know. So even my own TV. Like, Do you, uh, so, so music wise, and so you what what what's uh, what's your what's your bag in music? Do you know what I'm into? My cheering at the moment. I do like it cheering. So, um, but um, I also uh, depends what mood I'm in. I'm very sort of. If you're in the um, car driving and you want something a bit of yeah, sort of a beat, what would bit, you what would you bit be? Whack on a bit of Ed Sheeran. Because sometimes I like to listen to classical music. You know, really sort of calming influence. And you just go along, and you know, you, and then sometimes you know, depends if I've got a, you know, if I'm meeting the lads or whatever it may be, it might be a bit more upbeat. Um, but I literally, my music depends on my mood. Right. I'm very much like that. So there's no specific music that I like. Um, you know, if I'm out and it's hectic, then you know, drum and bass, or you know house music um, but I don't again I, you know I don't really listen to a lot of music either right I love I'm very I'm very good at entertaining myself you know I'm very good at sort of with my own thoughts and with my own my own vision of where I want to take myself where I want to take the family well you know what I want to do with with my life and that takes up most of my uh, most of my uh Headspace, you want to say, yeah. Most of my mind capacity. Starbucks. 115 mils. Oh, is, are we off for now? Eh? So right, let's go and have a coffee. We are, we are there, mate. Coffee let's... break. Running. Ready to go, mate. Yeah, everything's running. Everything's okay. running. Rock and roll. All right. right mate, we're back on the road. Back on the road. Here we go.
We've got half an hour now until we arrive. Yeah. Just oh, about. the gendarme. So we'll let him go ahead, mate. Yeah? Yes, yeah. yes. Let him pass every single time. Let the busies go ahead. That's what you should say. That's it, yeah. The busies or the, the, uh, the polis, as mm -hmm. we say in Newcastle. That was a nice bit of, nice bit of lunch, mate. So yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. If you, are you a takeaway fan? Do you like, uh, do you like a bit of takeaway? No, I, I try and eat as healthy as I can. Don't right. get me wrong, I'm never on diets. You know, I try and lead a sustainable lifestyle. Um, but, you know, if I'm here, I, I, I'm not sure I have stuff in a ham and cheese baguette down my neck. And, Something uh, quick and easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, doing it all the time, no. If you had to go out um, for a meal at a restaurant, what, what's your restaurant of choice? Restaurant of choice, yeah, Italian oh, or Indian um, or something like that. What's, no, what's your steakhouse? Steak, Miller and Carter. You've been, you've been to Miller yeah, Carter? I like yeah. Miller and Carter. Oops. Oops. Um, I like a nice steakhouse. I had a nice, um, what did I have? Ribeye steak last Rib night. Ribeye steak, yeah. I had, a, I had a sort of a business meeting last night in a nice steakhouse, and uh, oh, I can nice. still taste it now. Medium, medium rare, Blue. Um, medium rare, medium rare. Yeah. Okay, how about yourself? I like my medium. Medium to well, sometimes medium depending on the steak. So if it's a fillet, I'd probably go uh, medium to well, and if it's just a you know sirloin, I'd probably just do medium because yeah. it's a bit thinner. So uh, that that's mine. That's mine. If I'm doing a ribeye uh, on the bone, I'll go medium. Yeah. The proper medium should be red in the middle, but not no no blood. So um, yeah, it depends where I go and what type of steak I have because I do love my steak. Right. Yeah, I introduced Meat, you meats. to, um, what did I introduce you to last time? I was a, I was a, I was a virgin. A Wagamama virgin, a wasn't Wagamama it? virgin, mate. We had a good meal there, yeah. I'll tell you. That you enjoyed a, that, didn't oh, you? That was a great meal, mate. That yeah. was a great meal. I really enjoyed that. I had to be quick in there, because you, you were in like Flint on that bloody, uh, that starter we had, the peas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the um, Adamani beans or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said, if you don't get in there, Steve, I'm eating them all. Yeah, all exactly. Right. And you were, mate. You were, you straight away. Exactly. Oh, no, that was really nice, I've got to say. And uh, next time, we're in Lincoln or wherever. We'll, mm. we'll find find a steak place, right? Yeah, definitely. We'll do a steak. Do a steak. Yeah, I do like a bit. Of steak. So, what's your favourite dish? Ooh, it's got to be a steak. I have to say. After, <laughs> after that, Man after that, fish, heart. fish. Yeah, I do. You know what? I'm a big fan of seafood. Fish, fish, yeah. grouper, red snapper. Mm. I've got to Florida a lot, and yeah. um, you know the fish out there are just oh, it's unbelievable. Is it? I mean, they're catching it like an hour beforehand. You know, and it's on the plate. Beautiful, oh, yeah. absolutely beautiful. So, I like grouper. I like grouper, black grouper. Uh, sea bass is obviously really nice. Uh, snapper. There's a great restaurant to give a bit of a plug called Nemo's in uh, Naples, Florida. Uh, that's great. That's absolutely great. And um, it's uh, Judge Judy. You know Judge Judy from TV? Yeah. Uh, it's a local restaurant. No, oh, right, nice. So she's always in there. Cool. Great, great golf, mate. That's why I go there. I oh, do. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all good golf. So you go out there to play golf only, not business? Uh, no, no, no. It is a business trip, Zoe. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I do get a bit of golf. Right, Zoe. Yeah, it is a business trip because yeah. obviously you've got on expenses. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. no, no, I go out there. I meet my business partner who um, is out there a few months of the year. And, yep. um, so we, we get together, we talk about the following year. So November, normally every year I go to Florida, mm -hmm. uh, three or four days. Yep. We do a bit of golf. Uh, we do work in the morning and golf in the afternoon. Good golf player? Uh, you know, uh, I do get called a bandit. Right. No, no, not 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 the not the word you would associate with a car dealer. I, I would imagine, but uh, no, 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 <laughs> but no. I do get called a bandit when I play golf. Not to uh, blow my own trumpet because I'm not a great player, but handicap system is based on your skill level. So my course is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So the handicap is higher. Mm -hmm. When I go to other courses that aren't as difficult, mm -hmm. I then play a better round. If that makes sense. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they don't have a sloping scale in the UK. I don't know what it's called. It's a certain uh, yeah. rule that they do, but they're bringing it out next next year. So if your courses are harder, so if your home course is St Andrews, mm. and then you go play like a Parkland course, your, your handicap is going to be dropped. Got you. Uh, yeah. Accordingly or, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I do like I do like a bit of golf. I have to say. But the last time I went out there last year, I lost uh, eighteen balls in one and a half rounds. <laughs> oh shit, mate. <laughs> I mean, it was like water. Okay, I'll just hit another one. No, nope, didn't make it. <laughs> another one, another one. I think three on one hole, mate. Yeah, yeah. And then I got a great shot, and it just rolls off the green. And I'm thinking, it's just picking up speed, and it's just going on and on and on. He says, "There's water there," and I'm like, oh. "There's water." <laughs> like that. Uh, so, uh, nope, not good, mate. Not good. Not good. But it's good. It's good um, advertising. 
because yeah. it's got a obviously it's got the logo on the golf ball, so I don't mind losing them. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna find it. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's one course next to us. It's got a, a Bentley dealership in, uh, in Naples. And, uh, and there's a couple of times I've put a golf ball over the road into the car park. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've not heard anything smash yet. But <laughs> <laughs> On purpose, but, like Yeah, that. yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, I just secretly think... But you enjoy I, it, right? I do, mate. I do yeah, it. Yes, my, my business uh, partner's like that. Yeah, loser pays. And I'm thinking, I pay every night anyway. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, win yeah, or lose, yeah, I still yeah, pay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is good fun. It is good fun. Just to take two dollars off it, mate. It's just a joy. Yes, <laughs> I can imagine yeah. that. And you take it as well. You're like, oh, oh, I take it, mate. I take it. You take it. Do you try and there. have set holidays a year, or uh, I suppose it's a bit easier with you? Uh, or do you know what? I have less holidays than you. The last holiday I had is when I got married two years ago. Oh, we're so focused on keeping everything afloat that you lose focus sometimes of what yeah. you really need. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's so easily done. Before you know it, you're asking yourself why you're so tired. Why you know, is there something wrong with me? It's like no, no, you just. You just need a break, yeah. you know, you just need to, to, to completely unwind and go somewhere. Oh, go. thanks for doing that, as this is all recorded, my missus is going to know that, you're just telling me to go on holiday now. Yes, <laughs> go on holiday. <laughs> now, I think that, you know, for us, you know, trying to get away once or twice a year is, is, um, is a must, because I'm literally back to back, you know, that time just... You just just that week that we had this summer yeah. was just uh, invaluable, you know. So um, you know, even though it was hectic, but it's just like controlled hecticness that you can <laughs> controlled hecticness, you, that yeah. you can like unwind with, you know. It's like everything's going on at once, but at least you know it's not work. At least you can focus on your family. So let's let's try and figure this out. Right. Here we go again. Am right. I, I going to sma- take your belt am I gonna time, smash this place up? Right, so I think. Do you need cash or is it a card or what? I think you put this in. Yeah. And then 10 euros. Right, mate, one second. 10 euro. There you go. Boom. Right. That's it, done. Yeah, well, listen, as long as you factor in that break, then uh, you know you can go full pelt it then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they've just gone, you go he's and they can way. follow. Yeah. He's going the wrong way, isn't he? Yeah, he's going the wrong way. This sat nav must be really f***ed <laughs> up. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> like, I could Is understand, still on cycle ways, I could understand doing it once or twice, but like this, to get it wrong this, this badly is, is, is bad. Can you imagine him going on a road trip for that? Yeah, I'm going on a road trip, darling. I'll be back in uh, two days. Like two months later, he comes back with a big beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving to death. <laughs> oh, yeah. What happened? I don't know. I've followed the sat nav. I've seen every road in Chelmsford. Where have you, where have you been? <laughs> Hello, mate. Where'd you go? Well, my sat nav's supposed to be through town. I think you're taking you on the bypass. All right, so mate. People come out at the same spot. All right, mate. No worries. I will uh, meet you there then, mate. I'll see you at the memorial. Albert, that's what we're heading towards. Is it? And mm. Amiens. The mm-hmm. Battle of Amiens. Amiens. Yeah. First World War. You into your history, aren't you? I am, mate. Yeah. Yeah, you into military history. Yeah, I love it, mate. I love it. I just. Uh, did you? Did you? Was it? Is that one of the reasons why you joined the military, or did did you did you find a fascination with it? Fascination um, with it. Ah, uh, when when you were in the military. No, a fascination when I was a kid. Uh, loved history. I loved, uh, for me, certainly a bit more military history. I loved. I loved the uniforms. I loved the weapons. I yeah, loved the really. tactics. Uh, for me, that was just—it was just interesting to hear, you know, the, you know, Asian Corps, yeah, Asian you know, Corps, the, yeah. you know, the, the amount of troops, the amount of troops against one side and another, and you know, it's all one-sided. Oh, they're never going to win. Arrogance, and suddenly, you know, they're, they're taken over, and the archers uh, prevailed. And uh, so, I, I like that type of thing. You know, Rourke's Drift, you know, Zulus. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, I would say, right up to Napoleonic Wars. That was more mm-hmm. interesting for me. You know, the blocks of the soldiers yeah. moving forward yeah. and the uniforms. That was there. That was it. This is wonderful countryside, oh, mate. Beautiful. This is beautiful. So what's uh, what's this area famous for? Is it, is it cheese? Is it wine? Or is it nothing? Or is it something else? Just farmland. Nice. <laughs> Jeez, you're supposed to be the. You're supposed to be our French guide. Yeah. No. Listen, we were too far down south. <laughs> I was right up north. You're too far into civilization. All right. <laughs> So wine, you like wine? 
Yeah, I am uh, a wine uh, drinker. Red. Red, me too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I prefer red. Like a, I like a Argentinian Malbec. Oh, very nice. Um, but I like French wine as well. I was introduced to it at quite a young age. Plugged a lot of brands today, haven't we? You know, plugged. We have. Good. Good. We have. Yeah, that's a Garmin, mate. Garmin. I was going to say, you had, the, you had the Rolex last time I saw you. Mm-hmm. No, so, uh, Garmin, Garmin mate. today, mate. Garmin for life, Garmin, mate. Garmin for life. Garmin yeah. for life. No Rolex. No, Garmin. they pay my bills. They pay your bills. <laughs> <laughs> Rolex don't pay my bills, but it's <laughs> nice. <anyway. laughs> Submariner, this is. Not that I'm a Submariner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, but I like a Submariner with date. You know, good, good classic. Classic yeah, Rolex. Yeah, I do classic like Rolexes, Rolex. mate. We should be able to see the on the hill somewhere down here to the right. You should be able to see it. So we're going to head off afterwards, aren't we, to uh, drop you off at Paris, Charles de Gaulle. No rest for the wicked, as no they say. No rest for the wicked. And, um, and I don't know why there's no rest for me because I'm not wicked. No, no, no. But it pays the bills. But it pays the bills. Yeah, exactly. Underwear, trainers, um, trackies, trainers. Okay. Yeah. Footwear. Footwear. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've always wore their footwear. They do outstanding yeah. sort of footwear when yeah. it comes to running, uh, gym, you know, flat foot stuff. The Metcons are good. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Love it. I'm a, I'm Love a, it. I'm a, I'm a, I've got a lot of Nike stuff as well, to be fair. And uh, I used to have a lot of Nike golf clubs. Oh, did you? Yeah, but they pulled out, pulled out of golf because um, Nike was uh, Tiger Woods' uh, uh, brand. Mm-hmm. And, um, but they, they pulled out of golf clubs. Oh, really? so, uh, yeah, so I'm um, uh, fortunately back to Taylor Made. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> uh, tough but life. It's, it's tough life. Yeah, mm. well, it didn't help me last year, mm-hmm. did it? I lost 18 balls. Nice. <laughs> it's the balls that cost you, not not the clubs. Tightest, tightest <laughs> balls. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Look. Look that. That. Oh, right. That's an, that's another one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If you look how straight that is. Look. Unbelievable. It's pretty sad when you think about it. Yeah, that it's daunting, isn't it? It is, and especially for France, because although we were part of World War One, World War Two, and a lot of nations across the world, France was actually the battleground. Mm. You know, in both wars, so it was in their home backyard, if that right. makes sense. You know, um, so a sheer loss of life. I mean, just think of that. This is hundreds of thousands of troops. You know, over a million troops died in the Battle of the. But the some offensive in total on all sides. Let's not forget all sides. There's that eerie sort of beauty around it, isn't it? It's like you know, you can almost imagine these fields being full of carnage. Carnage. Destruction. And now yeah, it's mud be- beautiful. Yeah. Trenches, poppies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh It's a, uh, it's a lot to, lot to take in. I mean, look, all these here, small ones. See that? Mm-hmm. You don't see that, oh, no. obviously, because it, because it was fought here. There's, there's so much. There's a, there's a remembrance of everything. And it's uh, it's sombre and feeling to be here at the Thiepville Memorial, and yep. um, you know for the missing uh, uh, soldiers of the Somme, over seventy-two thousand of them, and all the names up there as well. Just putting that reef up there, a lump in your throat, and but also just a little nod of acknowledgement. It's like thank you, well done, you know, heroes. Yeah, heroes, mate. Absolutely cracking day, mate. What a way to finish it off. You know, as sad as it is, I feel proud to be here.